we will learn how to interpret vega theta and rho and then we will also learn uh, in which direction uh, do they play out for example you know if i have a short put position will i have a positive theta or will i have a negative theta so we will learn all those areas but let's step start step by step let's do some very basic uh, understanding of the concept of vega so we'll go to the same option price website and we will build a, a base case scenario okay so let me take a screenshot of this all right so observe these now we have uh, underlying price exercise price we have a volatility of 25 percentage and the current price of the call option is very low just 1.70 and it has a vega of 0 0.066 now what does it really mean it means when the current level of volatility is 25 percentage when the current level of volatility is 25 percentage the price of the option so call option premium is 1.705 1.705 now if if the the volatility goes up so if the volatility goes up by one percentage right and that's the easiest interpretation of vega you don't have to complicate this right that's how you want to think of it that if volatility goes up by one person and let's say for some reason you know suddenly something happens in the market the prices are more volatile now it's 26 percent what will happen is my option price will go up my option price will go up and they will go up by how much they will go up by 0 0.066 0 0.066 can you please add and tell me how much is that 1.771 1.771 now we'll experiment if that really works out so let me change this to 26 and let me take a screenshot of this okay and this is the result and let's see what's happening here so now we've changed the volatility from 25 to 26 and now your option prices become 1.771 now it looks precise because uh, we've just taken three decimals had i you know pulled up six or seven decimals you would have seen that it's not perfect but it's there because it's a derivative these are all approximate changes because we're taking large deltas here right but that's how you want to think of vegas that when volatility goes up by one percent by how much the option price in dollar terms will go up now which options will have positive vega and which options will have negative vega so it's very simple if you have a long position on either call or you have a long position on put it doesn't matter if you're a buyer of an option then you are going to be long on vega you're going to hope that volatility goes up but if you have a short position if you have a short position then you are going to have a then you're going to have a, a negative vega right another easy way to think of this another easy way to think of this is gamma and vega generally have same direction gammas and vegas have same direction so which means whenever your whenever your gammas are positive that time your vega will also be positive in fact in fact vega is also highest vega is also highest same like gamma when option is when option is at the money and close to expiry when option is at the money and close to expiry that time you typically find the vega being the highest for the options okay so uh, that's your general discussion on vega 
if you have any question on Vega, you can type in a queue, follow up with your question. Otherwise, I'm taking you to uh, theta after this. Excellent. So let's go to let's go to theta here. Now let's build a, a base case scenario. So I'll revert back to the 25% volatility. And how much theta we have? Okay, let's increase the theta a little bit. Okay, good. So now let this be our base case scenario. And uh, this, you know, this interpretation of theta is kind of mind blowing. Uh, when I was learning option Greeks, uh, one of the things that I really struggle with is building a solid grip on how to read theta. Right? I was confused about it for quite some time. Uh, and now when I see things in the hindsight, I, you know, I think that how stupid I was that I could not interpret such a easy concept. But let me let me show it to you what what that concept is. So right now, the days for expiry is 10. So currently, the number of days, which are left for expiry are 10 days. And currently the call option price, the call option premium, it is 170.469 so call option premium is 170.469 now if you know the number of days reduces by one number of days reduces by one and now the number of days left for expiry are nine days which means uh, today passes uh, nothing happens today and you know you suddenly open your computer terminal tomorrow then what will happen to your call premium of course we know that as the time is reduced the option premium is going to reduce but it is going to reduce by how much so for every day the option value will lose by 8.93 dollars right? that's how easy the theta interpretation is so minus 8.932 so minus 8.932 can you please help me with the math? 170 minus 8.932. It is 161.537. So tomorrow, if nothing happens, my option value goes to 161.537. Now let's go and verify those results. So let me change the number of days to nine. Let me take a screenshot here. These are my results and let's observe whether the results are tallying up. Now the number of days are nine and now the option price has come down to 161.461.46, right? We calculated it to be five, three, but it's fairly close. So that's how you're going to read the number of theta. Now in terms of directions, who will have what directions? So, uh, from a direction perspective, from a direction perspective, from a direction perspective, thetas are, uh, you can think of them as thetas are kind of opposite in direction to gamma and vega. So gamma and vega are kind of friends, but theta is not, theta is not their friend. Theta is in the opposite direction. So what do I mean by this? It means when you are on the long side, whether it's a call or put doesn't matter, your theta will be negative, right? Your gamma is positive, your vega is positive, but your theta is negative. And when you're on the short side, when you're on the short side, that time your theta is going to be positive. And that's because of the way, you know, they define theta. So the definition of theta is, the reduction in the value of option for every day that passes. 
So if you are a buyer of an option, you know, you're worried because as the number of days are getting closer to expiry, the option value is falling. But if you're a seller of an option, you should be happy because selling that option means that option is your liability. So you want the value of the option to fall. And every day passes, the value of option falls. You make profit out of it, right? That's your benefit. Therefore, when you're on the long of an option, you're going to have a negative theta. When you're short on an option, you're going to have a positive theta. Uh, that's it. So with this, theta concludes. If you have any question, uh, type in on the box. If you don't, then I'm going to take you to row. Okay. So now next concept is uh, row. Now let's build a base case scenario. So let me switch. Okay, let's increase the row number a little bit. Let me increase the expiry to 100 days. Okay. So let's assume this is a this is a base case scenario. Now in the base case scenario here, right now the RFR has been assumed to be five percentage, and the call option price is five seventy three. Observe call row is positive, put row is negative, because when RFR goes up, call option value goes up, put option value goes down right so rfr is helping the call not so much helping the put option so right now when rfr is rfr is five percentage the option value is 573 573.562 now if rfr from five goes to six right so rfr goes up by one percentage then what will happen is my option price will increase by the amount of my option price will increase by the amount of 13.71 can someone please add and give me the number five eighty two point two seven 587.27 okay 587.272 is this correct okay and let's let's verify the result now so let's go in here and let's make your rfr as six percentage and let's see how close we've gotten so when you make your RFR, so when you make your RFR is as six percentage, your option price became 587. Uh, we forecasted it to be almost there, 587, 27 and 365. So that's your row. And how you want to think of this is, if you're on the long call, then you will have a positive row. If you are on the short call, you will have negative row. If you are on long put, you will have negative row. And if you are on the short put, then you will have positive row. So one way to conceptualize this is the direction kind of looks like similar to Delta similar to delta right from a direction perspective so if you remember the direction of delta you'd automatically remember the direction of rho so rho and delta is like one pair and then vega and gamma is like one pair and then theta is completely opposite of vega and gamma so they're technically like three teams uh, we can look at delta and rho as one team vega and gamma as one team and then the uh, theta as one team Okay, any questions you would like to ask? How is row sign been derived? 
uh, we just did an example, right, uh, Mohit, that when RFR went up, the call option value went up. So that's a positive, positive delta. That's why a long call has a positive, I mean, that's a positive, positive change, right? So therefore, a long call is positive. So which means short call becomes negative. Long put, long put was negative. So that means short put has to be positive. How is RFR impacting the premium? Uh, just think of binomial model, Black and Scholes, uh, put call parity, anything. For example, let's think of binomial model. Think of risk neutrality. An investor wants to earn RFR, right? So he wanted his 100 to become 110. Now, higher the RFR, higher is the you know, expectation by the investor. That means higher is the amount by which stock price will go up. So call option, of course, is going to be more expensive. Or just think of Black and Scholes formula, spot into ND1 minus X into E raised to minus R into ND2. Now, higher the R, lower would be the lower would be the bond value, higher would be the call value. So higher RFR results into better call option values and lower put option values. You can think of it from any of the mathematical formulas you've learned so far. Do we need to remember formulas of all the Greeks? I wouldn't recommend you to memorize those formulas. I don't see a scenario on the exam where they'll require you to calculate option Greeks based on those formulas. Uh, I'll show you what kind of questions. We're still not at the exam level. We're still building the background. How, uh, next question, all of these have simultaneous effect on options. How does one know which of these has been more effective on the option? Uh, let me rephrase your question, Dimple. You can simply say, all of them are affecting, changing, you know, all of them with are impacting the option. So uh, as a trader, when I want to know which Greek is what, I change one at a time, keep everything else constant, right? That's how typically you do derivatives. You do a dy by dx, where you allow only one x to change, and then you see the impact on y. So we do that. Now, uh, in terms of how do I build a trade on it? Like, how do I know as a trader, which ones are important? That depends on what is your opinion on the market. And we, we're still not there. I think the real skill level is achieved on options when you have an opinion on the market and mentally you're able to map your opinion with what kind of option Greek your portfolio should have. If you can reach that level, then I think you've really mastered the whole uh, option business.